In this video, we're going to have a look at energy systems. That is how we gain, store and use energy and to build our understanding so that we know how to make ourselves run faster both in training and in competition. It will also enable us to help us recover quickly after sessions. During exercise, we get our energy from a source called ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. This is the energy stored in muscles which we use to power our body to move forward or to move in any direction whilst we are exercising. This is the energy that comes from the food we store and is known as metabolic energy. Unfortunately, our body only stores enough energy for two seconds of muscle contractions. Yes, really, that's just two seconds, which means that we need to be able to gain more energy in the form of ATP from other sources. These are called the alactic, lactic and aerobic energy systems, and we'll explain a lot more about them later. The proportion in which these are used is strongly based on the speed we are running. So if we are running slowly, for example, we will use more aerobic energy. If you look at the image here, you'll see that the eventual goal of all energy acquisition is to replenish our ATP so we can use it in muscle contractions. Let's talk about the alactic system. This system is also known as the ATP-PCR system or the phosphocreatin system. Phosphocreatin is a naturally occurring compound found within the body. It can be broken down using the enzyme creatine kinase to form ATP and creatine. This ATP can then be used in muscular contraction. However, your phosphocreatine supplies only will last for about 10 seconds when you start exercising before they're completely depleted, meaning they can produce energy or ATP very quickly, but don't last very long, meaning you need the other energy systems to then kick in. This process is anaerobic, meaning it does not require oxygen. It's also alactic, as it doesn't produce any of the common enemy for runners, lactic. The ATP PCR system is most useful in field events such as throwing and jumping, where a short burst of maximal con muscle contraction is needed to produce a performance. Next, let's talk about the lactic acid system. A dreaded word for many of you athletes out there. It's also known as anaerobic glycolysis. This is the process where glycogen stored in your muscles is broken down into glucose. The glucose is then broken down in a series of reactions which release energy to form ATP. These reactions can occur without oxygen making it an anaerobic process again. This process replenishes ATP quickly so it's perfect for speed and power events where the muscles are contracting very fast and require to contract forcefully. It does form the waste product of lactate which during exercise is converted into lactic acid causing the fatigue and pain you feel at the end of a hard race or session. It can impair muscle contraction and performance. For this reason, the system can only sustain the body for exercise of shorter events between about 30 seconds and a minute. Otherwise, the accumulation of lactic acid becomes too great, negatively affecting performance. Lastly, we'll talk about the aerobic system. This is the system where the body's fuel stores of both glycogen so carbohydrates and fats are broken down in a series of reactions using oxygen to release energy that's used to form ATP. It releases energy to form ATP and also waste products of water and CO2 in a process called aerobic respiration. It occurs in a series of enzyme controlled reactions, three in fact, starting firstly with aerobic glycolysis, then the Krebs cycle, and lastly, oxidative phosphorylation. At each stage, 
energy is released to form ATP. So you get a lot of ATP from this system compared to the other ones. This makes it more efficient in providing energy as it provides a lot. However, it's a lot slower to get going as there's so many reactions it has to go through. So it's slower to kick in than the other systems when you start exercising. As a result, it makes it ideal for longer endurance performance of three minutes and over, as it's very efficient in producing ATP, but it produces it at a slower rate. So for people doing longer distance events where the muscles have to contract continuously, but with a lower force output, this system is the one that will be predominantly used. It's also good because there is not a harmful buildup of waste product such as lactate, because you would not want lactate hitting you in the middle of your marathon. Training to improve the lactic system involves high intensity runs with short recoveries. This leads to training adaptations in the body, such as an increase in size and strength of type 2 fast twitch muscle fibres, an increase in ATP and phosphocreatin stores, and an increased tolerance to lactic acid building up in the muscles. Training to improve the aerobic system involves running various intensities of tempo runs that can be monitored using heart rates and training zones. The main adaptation from training the aerobic system is an increased VO2 max. This is due to the other adaptations from the training, such as an increased volume of red blood cells, increased heart size and strength, and an increase in the enzymes involved in aerobic respiration. So, a mix of training is the key to developing all these systems to make you a well-rounded athlete, regardless of your discipline. So that 400 meter runners can finish strongly in the home straight, or 10,000 meter athletes can produce a blistering last lap at the end of their race. Thank you for listening.